Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, welcome. I mean, I'm so pleased to be here. Mashallah, thank you, God, for allowing us to um, have this conference. And, you know, I was just telling someone that um, the energy that we have in this conference reminds me of, you know, when I first started attending conferences 20-some years ago. So, mashallah, thank you, God, for bringing that feeling back and that, you know, awesomeness and, and sharing it with you know, good believers, and, and um, I'm so happy, mashallah. Um, so I wanted to talk about this. I've actually given this sermon a couple of times over the years, over the past 20 years, so you guys may have forgotten it. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, and, and I think it's important, it, it's called, it's entitled Meaning of Messengership, okay? So, and I, I think it's important as submitters that, um, uh, we understand, of course, it's very important that we understand um, the role of the messengership uh, and the role of the messenger and um, understand it correctly because it's, it's very important. I see, unfortunately, and God guides, of course, um, those who are sincere, but I've seen that over the years that uh, there's so many people that fail this test. Okay, it's uh, Surah 17. 94, 95. So it says messengership, uh, an essential test. Okay, meaning that um, in order to be a, a true submitter, we have to pass this test. Okay, so um, it's going to happen to all of us. Uh, it says, what prevented the people from believing when the guidance came to them? Is their saying, did God send a human being as a messenger? Say, if the earth were inhabited by angels, we would have sent down to them from the sky an angel messenger. Okay, so um, I'm going to continue on here, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to, um, if I'm talking too fast, let me know. I'm, I'm going to try to cover this. There's quite a bit here, so if I, and if I run out of time, let me know. Um, so... It starts out, it says, one of the most intriguing and critical issues facing modern submitters is that of the role of the messenger, right? And I remember, you know, you probably remember, and if you're new submitters, this is probably something you're still trying to figure out. But, uh, and we all remember those who have been here for a while, um, trying to figure out, you know, this, this concept and where does he fit in and, and how does it work and so on and so forth. So... Um, what does it mean to believe that someone is a messenger? How are messengers different from other knowledgeable people? Uh, in the Torah, God teaches us, this is in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18, 18 and 19. It says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kinsmen, and I will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. If any man will not listen to my words, okay, interesting, the my is capitalized, meaning God, okay, my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. So this is God telling us. In uh, John, in the gospel, John 7, chapter 7, 16 through 18, it says, um, God taught us through Jesus who said, my doctrine, and this is amazing when you talk to Christians and you tell them this, okay, it's like, how can't you not get this? I mean, it doesn't make sense. My doctrine is not my own. So this is Jesus speaking. It comes from him, with a capital H, who sent me. Any man who chooses to do his will will know about this doctrine, namely, whether it comes from God or is simply spoken on my own. Whoever speaks on his own is bent on self-glorification. Basically, whoever follows their own opinion is bent on self-glorification. And Jesus is saying, I'm not. I'm not doing this. The man who seeks glory for him, God, who sent him is truthful. There is no dishonesty in his heart. In the Quran, Surah 4, verse 80, God clearly tells us, whoever obeys the messenger is obeying God. 
Uh, Surah 21, 26 through 27, and all messengers are his honored servants. They never speak on their own, and they strictly follow his commands. From these verses, it is clear that there is a difference between a messenger and other knowledgeable people, because the messenger does not speak on his own. In a sense, we can say that he acts as God's mouthpiece. He gives us not his doctrine, but that of God. Isn't that what the word messenger implies? Now, obviously, messengers, when acting as men, make mistakes like all humans. So how do we know uh, if what they tell us is from God, and thus, without question, the truth? Or if it is their own opinion, which can be incorrect? Um, I would like to suggest that we look at the mistakes which we know from the Quran that messengers of the past have made. We know that Abraham prayed for forgiveness for his father, and Noah questioned God about his son. Muhammad feared the people and did not want to marry the divorced wife of his adopted son. And he turned away from the blind man. All of the mistakes mentioned in the Quran were corrected by God while the messengers were alive. We do not have a single example of a messenger who was sent to correct the mistakes of a previous messenger. The messengers come to renew the message after the followers of a previous messenger have distorted the message, not because the previous messenger bungled the job, right? Does everybody get that? Okay. The message does not come all at once. We see this with the revelation of the scriptures. We also experienced it watching the growth of new understanding and purification as it came through uh, Dr. Rishad Khalifa, Messenger of the Covenant. We are an incredible, fortunate generation. For the first time in human history, we have the words of the messenger as he typed them into the computer. We have the words as he spoke them onto video and audio tapes. We are blessed with the fact that some of the words we have recorded are from earlier stages, thus documenting our growth and understanding of the truth. And we are blessed to have his final work, the revision of his translation of the Quran, which he was working on in the last hours of his life. Still, there may be those who have doubt and God answers them. In Surah 42, 24, are they saying he, Rashad, has fabricated lies about God? If God willed, he could have sealed your mind, but God erases the falsehood and affirms the truth with his words. He is fully aware of the innermost thoughts. Um, and Dr. Khalifa himself wrote in the uh, February 1990 issue of the Submitter's Perspective, as stated in uh, Surah 3, verse 81, and, uh, oh, this is him, actually his quote from the February 1990 issue of the Submitter's Perspective. And this is interesting because... Um, there may be some people, I, I think a lot of people know this, but there may be some people say, wait a minute, he was martyred in January of 1990, so how could he have sent out a, a submariner's perspective in February, right? So if this is very interesting. God is running everything. Uh, to the best of my recollection, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the last three issues of the submitter's perspective, he actually did all at once. Um, in, I guess, November or December of 89. So, and he sent those three out. And of course, God is running everything because he knew that he was no longer going to be here. But, so we actually have um, January, February, and March of 1990 submitters' perspectives that came out. So just some history and information. Um, so in that, he says, as stated in three... Uh, Surah 3, verse 81, and uh, Surah 46, verse 9, God's messenger of the covenant does not bring anything new. It says, he says, everything I receive, so this is Rashad uh, talking, um, everything I receive and pass on to you is already in the Quran. However, the Quran is full of information that is kept by Almighty God for a revelation at a specific time. And this is actually a quote from the, the Righteous Do Not Really Die, if you guys have read that article. Um, our knowledge will continue to grow 
inshallah, but we, uh, it will do just that. It will grow and expand. It does not make sense that the knowledge God gave to us through one of his manifest man, uh, messengers would be wrong and would need to be corrected. Uh, Surah 16, verse 35, can the messengers do anything but deliver the complete message? Am I saying that the men who are messengers are infallible? Of course not. But I am saying that God is and he will not allow his messengers to contaminate his message with falsehood. In their role as messengers, they speak only the truth, the word of God. Remember, 2127, they never speak on their own and they strictly follow his commands. If we believe that Rashad Khalifa was a messenger, we must believe in what came through him. If we do not, do we really believe he was a messenger? Do we really believe he was delivering what God sent? If we believe that Rashad Khalifa was a messenger, we must accept it when he said that his translation was authorized. We must believe him when he said that the following verses referred to him. This is Surah uh, 2, 252. These are God's revelations. We recite them through you truthfully, for you are one of the messengers. And Surah 81, 15 through 29, it says, I solemnly swear, this is God, I solemnly swear by the galaxies, precisely running in the orbits, by the night as it falls and the morn as it breathes, this is the utterance of an honorable messenger authorized by the possessor of the throne, fully supported, he shall be obeyed and trusted. Your friend, Rashad, is not crazy. He saw him at the high horizon. He is not holding back any news. It is not the talk of a rejected devil. Now then, where will you go? God asks the question, now then, now you know this information. What are you going to do? This is a message to all the people. For those who wish to go straight, whatever you will is in accordance with the will of God, Lord of the universe. There is, of course, the danger of falling into idol worship of the messenger, as millions before us have done. This is something we must all watch out for. Perhaps it will help to ask ourselves what idol worship is. God defines it in the Quran as believing that anyone or anything other than God can help us. Using that definition, someone might try to argue that we believe Rashad Khalifa explained points of the Quran for us with his footnotes and subtitles, and so he helped us. Okay, he explained it. Actually, God is the one who explains the Quran. In Surah 75, 18 and 19, once we recite it, you shall follow such a Quran then it is we who will explain it. How does God explain the Quran, um, though? How does he communicate with us? He tells us in Surah 4251, no human being can communicate with God except through inspiration or from behind a barrier or by sending a messenger through whom he reveals what he wills. He is the Most High most wise. Did God send a messenger to explain things? If we accept Rashad Khalifa as a messenger, clearly he did. In Surah 5, verse 19, it says, O people of the scripture, our messenger has come to you to explain things to you after a period of time without messengers, lest you say, we did not receive any preacher or warner. A preacher and warner has now come. To you, God is omnipotent. We know from his footnote that Rashad Khalifa was the messenger referred to in this verse. This whole issue goes back to whether we accept God as the doer of everything. If we accept this principle that God is doing everything, it follows easily that he explains the Quran through his messenger. It is not the messenger who is doing the explaining. It is God. The messenger is just the means of communication. He is just delivering the message from God to us. Simple as that. The danger is in forgetting that the guidance is from God and attributing it to the messenger. 
The messenger does not really guide or explain or purify. Those things happen through him in accordance with God's will. God is the one who guides and explains and purifies. The most important lesson Dr. Khalifa strove to teach us is that the Quran alone should be our source of religious guidance. How does that fit into the present discussion that we're having? Aren't we talking about taking information that is in footnotes and appendices and not in the Quran? No, not actually. Anyone who know, comes to know the Quran as well as Dr. Khalifa did will come to the same understanding that he did because everything he told us is based in the Quran. He's not speaking on his own, remember, 2127. God has made things easy for us by consolidating that knowledge for us and giving it to us through a messenger. Okay, What a blessing. Do we appreciate that blessing? Do we want to be like the people of Sheba who did not accept the comfort and security that God gave to them, saying in 3419, Our Lord, we do not care if you increase the distance of our journeys without any stations. They thus wrong their own souls. God has made this knowledge easily available to us. Will we say, thank you, God, but no thanks? We don't want your help? God forbid. We know that Satan advocates idol worship, and he pushes it as hard as he can. He has duped millions upon millions into this trap. We must be very careful of it. However, that is not his only trap. God uses the children of Israel as examples again and again in the Quran. Their problem was not idolizing their messengers, but minimizing and rejecting them. They followed their scholars and their own egos rather than what came through their messengers. Sounds familiar. We have taken, uh, this is Surah 5 or 70, we have taken a covenant from the children of Israel and we sent to them messengers. Whenever a messenger went to them with anything they disliked, some of them they rejected and some they killed. We must be equally careful of this trap. Satan has been able to dupe countless intelligent people into worshiping their messenger without recognizing that is what they're doing. He has also duped countless others into rejecting their messenger without their realizing they are doing so. This is an essential test. For the victims of either trap, the result is the same. This is Surah 3, 86 through 89. Why should God guide people who disbelieved after believing? And after witnessing that the messenger is truth, and after solid proofs have been given to them, God does not guide the wicked. These have incurred condemnation by God and the angels and all the people. Eternally they abide therein. The retribution is never commuted for them, nor will they be reprieved. Exempted are those who repent thereafter and reform. God is forgiver most merciful. Thank you. Oh, question. Any? Okay, we have some questions. Okay. So, Marshall, was that from a seminarist perspective? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it speaks for itself. So... Yeah, um, it, it just, I mean, it's, it hits the nail on the head. It's, it, it's everything that, that we've learned and understood who a messenger is. Sorry, go ahead, fine. Mashallah. Um, my question is to kind of like increase my own knowledge. Um, I hear a lot of questions that um, necessarily kind of want to dilute messengership and everything like that, saying it's not a big deal and stuff like that. And I hear this sometimes. And one of the big questions is, the messenger is dead, we have the Quran. And so when they say that, I also see that they don't read the headers, the footnotes, the appendices, the introduction, and they focus on the Quran. Um, my question is kind of, 
what would be the appropriate response to maybe help these individuals that God is already trying to help by putting yeah. this stuff in the Quran? Well, I mean, simply, God has given us this gift, this blessing, right, of, like you said, the appendices, the footnotes, the subtitles, the videos, the audios, submitters' perspectives, all of this information God has given us. So what does it matter? God gave us all this information from the messenger, okay? It doesn't nullify. It doesn't, you know, um, it doesn't, you know, because Rashad has died doesn't mean that all of this information goes with him, right? This is a blessing from God. He just delivered it, right? This is a message that, that Rashad delivered to the people. It's like, okay, here's a letter. I'd like you to have it, okay? And if I die, you're like, oh, well, this letter's no good anymore because now I'm dead, right? I mean, how much sense does that make? Zero. It, it makes zero sense, exactly. Thank you, Natasha. I mean, <laughs> zero sense, I agree. I mean, it, it just, it's just, it's ridiculous. And, you know, uh, you try to tell people, and, and unfortunately, um, if someone wants to guide someone, okay, the messenger explains that you'll be very eloquent, okay, and, and you'll answer all their questions, you'll be able to come up with all the verses, and that person will go, wow, it makes perfect sense, because God wants to guide that person. But when you're talking to people who disbelieve, they're looking for an excuse to um, reject the messenger and reject you and the message and all of this information, okay? You may sound like a bumbling idiot, right? And, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. I mean, God doesn't want to guide that person. So... We have six hands up, and God oh, wow. willing, we're going to get through everyone, so... Let's just be patient. Let's practice our patience right now, Gavali. Uh, Ashkan. Um, okay, Masha, great speech. I uh, just wanted to add something, uh, make a comment if that's okay. Um, so it's really interesting. I actually uh, listened to one of the audios um, not too long ago, and the messenger makes it very clear um, what it means when he says, do not, um, there are certain conditions that he says, do not obey. Right, the messenger, um, and I listen to it, and mashallah, he makes a great point because a lot of people are abusing that information, and they're trying to uh, apply their own laws and take pieces of information here and there and make up their own logic. But the messenger clearly in the audio it says that in other he says if it's not in the Quran, in other words, if it's not righteous, right? And he gives the example of Muhammad and. Um, and uh, how people weren't supposed to obey him because of that. So when it, it boils down to um, the man himself, right? Not the message that he delivers. Because the message that he delivers is flawless. It comes from God. And the condition applies when it comes down to the man himself. And if anything, let's say unrighteous, something that Muhammad did in chapter 80 uh, with the blind man. That's one example that we can use. But unfortunately, people take that information and they want to apply everything to that. If something doesn't fit their logic, then they do that, they go that far. Yeah. You know, I just want to say something real quick. You know, there's a verse, it's in Surah 33, I think 37, where it talks about Muhammad the man disobeys Muhammad the messenger. Okay, and you're like, this, 36? 36. So it's, it's interesting, If this is one of the things when I first became a submitter that made it very clear for me that Muhammad the man disobeys Muhammad the messenger. Wait a minute. Are we talking about two Muhammads? Are there two people here? In fact, um, my wife, um, Shabnam, said this early on to, um, I think it was Atef, Rashad's brother, um, said, you know, what about this verse? I mean, this is how I understand. It makes perfect sense. And he laughed at her, and he said, um, ridiculingly, he says, you know, this woman thinks that, that the messenger is two people. How ridiculous. But it, it actually showed his um, um, insincerity and his lack of understanding of, you know, what, what the messenger and the role of the messenger was. Sorry. Lisa. The question is that uh, you're talking about, there's so many t uh, respond uh, from Quran regarding the, uh, the proof from the messenger. Hmm. Could you explain uh, a little more about what God means by the proof? What are the proofs that we are talking about in Quran at this moment? 
just get a little, you know, collaboration regarding the proof because the word proof can be manipulated with some of the uh, untranslation. So what is the proof in this Quran and could you give some information? Thank you. Well, I don't know if I understand your question, but I mean, the proof that, that Rashad came with, you mean? Okay, so we, we know that, that um, in the Quran it talks about that um, how do we distinguish a true messenger from a false messenger, right? So they come with, you know, they, they um, advocate the worship of God alone. They do not ask for a wage, okay? And then they come with proof, okay? So we know that the, the proof that God sent uh, with Rashad was the mathematical miracle of the Quran. Um, and, you know, once you study that, examine it, um, you understand that um, someone couldn't have just woken up one day, and my wife says this all the time, you know, this guy couldn't have just woken up one day and said, oh, hey, look, there's a miracle in the Quran. And it's, you know, there's all of this information is divisible by 19. Wow, isn't that amazing that I found that? I mean, because we know that, that God does not allow the wicked or the insincere to understand the Quran, let alone his mathematical miracle, right? So, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. I hope that answered your question. Anything else? Um, so a question for you. Um, how would a person uh, go wrong if they say, um, I'm only going to go and uphold the Quran alone and everything else in the book is enough for me and I do not need these other explanations. Um, how would you uh, respond to such a thing? Is that, um, is that a problem if someone says, hey, listen, I'm just gonna uphold the Quran alone. I do not need um, these explanations because the messenger always said Quran alone. So we always use the Quran alone. Yeah. And uh, what, would you, what, what would be your response to that? Well, first of all, <laughs> if, we're talking, if they're saying Quran alone, right? So you read these verses and say, okay, well, Quran alone. Here's a verse from Quran that says God will send a messenger to explain things to you, right? So if you really believe in the Quran alone, then you will accept this verse and 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 this verse that talks about you know, God sending a messenger to explain, obey God and the messenger, I mean, don't place your opinion above God and his messenger. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. So if, if you really, you know, believe that, sincerely believe, uh, and, and you're, uh, you're saying, I believe in Quran alone, then let's take the Quran and read these verses. Do you accept it? Do you accept this? Okay, and if they say yes, they accept it, then we'll see what their actions are. Because, you know, they can say with their lip, you know, is it lip service or not? So... That's what I would tell them. I would also tell them that, um, you know, just like the people of Sheba, do we want to be unappreciative of what God has sent to us? I mean, God says he's, he communicates with us through a messenger. So we're like, okay, I, God, I don't, I, don't want, uh, I don't want to accept that verse because, um, you know, I don't believe that you can communicate through a messenger and, uh, you know, deliver this information to us um, correctly or um, fully or whatever it is. I mean, I'll stop there. I could go on, but um, those are some things that I would say if I had a chance. I don't know if you guys had a chance. Did you? <laughs> Did they give you a chance? <laughs> okay, sorry. I think it's my turn. Mashallah, thank you, Aaron John, for the beautiful uh, Praise God. speech that we had. I just want to add something that uh, Payam John had uh, the questions regarding the people who have difficulty reading the subtitles, the footnotes, or says what kind of answer we can give is that we have to understand a lot of people don't understand who the messenger of God is or was. And that's why in 1794, one of the essential, the essential tests is the messengership, means that who is a messenger of God? And a lot of people, they go back to the history, how the previous messenger did. Prophet Muhammad's job was to deliver the Quran, nothing more, okay? So they have a difficulty to understand the duty of God's messenger of the covenant. That's why they cannot, you know, when you understand a messenger of God, according to 21, which is the prophets, uh, the Al-Anbiya, 
verse 27, God says that my messengers are honored servants that they never, uh, they follow strictly God's command, never deviate. So that's it. Anything that God's messenger brings regarding religion, we have to listen and take heed and obey. So that's what it is. It is part of the messengership test. A lot of people fail, unfortunately. And um, it's not easy. That's why the, the believers are so rare, okay? Because they come, overcome their prejudice, and they follow. So, uh, True. I think I'm next. Um, Aaron, uh, thank you. That was a great uh, speech, mashallah. Um, I just wanted to say, um, this is more of a comment, but um, I, think, I think a lot of people, some of the people who, who uh, don't accept the teachings uh, delivered through God's messenger, um, I've noticed that kind of like people, they refer to them in a derogatory manner as Quran aloners. And I just want to give everybody a reminder that, that that's a description of God's people. Quran aloner is a description of God's people because God's people are the only ones who follow the Quran alone. Uh, and that following the Quran alone is not lip service. I think it's worse. It's worse than just being unappreciative. If it was just being unappreciative, that's forgivable, right? Um, what, what these people are doing is that they're accepting the Quran partially, um, right. which is described in Surah 15, verses 90 and 91. Um, God says that the hypocrites are dividers. They accept the Quran partially. And uh, when a person says, and that's why in Surah 3, verse 82, um, God tells us that rejectors of God's messenger of the covenant are no longer submitters. It's because... Even though they may be preaching the, the, you know, that you should follow the Quran alone, their actions prove that they don't follow the, the, the whole Quran. Exactly. Uh, so I just wanted to, to put that out there as a reminder that, that, that uh, God's people are the true followers of the Quran alone. And that following the Quran alone is not lip service. It's uh, uh, accepting and upholding the Quran in its entirety, uh, including... Um, the teachings that God gives us through his messenger, which are confirmed by the verse of the Quran.